I'm going back to this because uh, uh, when those criteria were developed, uh, our investigators who worked on that uh, took lots of fe uh, heat from uh, 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 from the field, like oh, you're creating something that's very complicated, we had to do that. And it's not that complicated, but now we have uh, a, a tool that uh, it's reproducible, that can serve for uh, uh, clinical trials and regulatory pathway approval. So, uh, and those criteria are very stringent. So 68% using NH uh, criteria, it's probably much higher if you use the old uh, uh, investigator-driven criteria. Second, uh, toxicity profile was acceptable. Uh, it was not uh, uh, negligible. About one third of patients had to stop treatment because of side effects. Side effects were not uh, surprising. They are what usually has been seen with abrutinib, but some patients had to uh, uh, stop the drug. And then third, uh, there was a quite high proportion of uh, responders uh, that uh, were able to stay on uh, uh, maintain response beyond six months. Well, it's another uh, very important uh, aspect uh, that responses were not only responses, but they were durable. Uh, high proportion of patients were as well uh, uh, able to taper corticosteroids. And then uh, using secondary endpoints, the symptom scale will tell us how much patient is suffering from symptoms of chronic graft versus host disease, those uh, signals as well approved. All this uh, led to this trial that uh, uh, um, we think it's historical because it's been so many years our goal to have a first drug ever approved. But this is really what we now expect signaling and opening the gates really to come in with the new trials, bigger trials, uh, different drugs, new drugs combinations. They can really uh, uh, exert uh, uh, authentic and even uh, more improved benefit in this patient population.